Ufuk Abdur Eşit Çin Şincer Üniversitesi Genel Fizik Bölümünden 93'te lisans derecesiyle mezun oldu. Uygulamalı Fizik Bölümünde yüksek lisans ve bilişimsel malzeme biliminde doktora yaptı. Doktor Abdur Eşit İtalya'dan Uluslararası Teorik Fizik Merkezi'ne çalıştı. İsviçre'de Akademi Unix ve Linux Sistem Mühendisi olarak çalıştı. Halen İsviçre'de bilgi ve iletişim teknolojileri çözüm mimarı olarak görev yapmaktadır. Alkışlarınızla kendisini görüşmeler. <gülüyor> Hem e, aranızda Çanakkale'de e, olmak e, çok gurur duydum. Ben aslında bir özel e, hazırlığımı yapmıştım bu sunum için. Yani e, e, Cognitive Service falan bir şey var. Mesela ben burada İngilizce konuşuyorum. Benim konuşmamını canlı e, ekranda Türkçe gösteriyor. Yani bu yani artificial intelligence, machine learning mesela çok e, önemli bir teknoloji var. Bunu ben sizce teknoloji cihazını göstermek istiyorum ama bu olur mu değil? Yani teknoloji, teknoloji çalışmışsa işler görüşmüyor. <gülüyor> Yerine 25 dakika Türkçe konuşmak ama çok zor geliyor. <gülüyor> Bunu ben sunum İngilizce e, demek istiyorum eğer izin verirsiniz. Yes. First of all, I would like to thank uh, for your invitation. This uh, one is my other colleagues to share our knowledge in our area with you, and especially to be here in Çanakkale. I feel very honored. Thank you very much. So I'm going to present slightly different topics and what my colleagues are presenting. It's about Industry 4.0 and how we can solve industrial problem by using cloud computing. So first of all, I would like to introduce a little bit about Industry Revolution, especially about uh, Industry 4.0 and what are the main challenges uh, in that area. And then, uh, give you some preview about how we are going to solve those problems by using cloud computing. Then I will jump to a cloud computing area and then I will uh, shortly present what is cloud computing and what are the main characteristics, who are the main players in the market and how we solve industry problem by using cloud computing. And then at the end I would like to show you some examples which I work uh, currently and how we solve that problem in the industry. So, I have been introduced, so So, if you rem still remember what you have learned from the school, Industrial Revolution started at the end of 18th century. Uh, Somewhere in England, uh, by introducing water and steam powered engine to a ship with a huge amount of material from one place to the other in cheaper and uh, faster way. And also, it solved some problem in the heavy industry. After a century later, the uh, second industrial revolution took place, and electric electrical power has been used in mass uh, production based uh, production model. And if I look at the audience, actually some of you were part of the third industrial revolution when uh, microcontroller unit and uh, information technology start to uh, replace some components uh, from industry. And uh, we said actually a new era has been become, uh, it's called digital era. So the, that's why the people as born before that period of time called digital immigrants. So some of you are immigrants in digital era, and some of you, some of you after this era called digital natives. That's why some of you still don't know what this Sony Walkman and Kodak Film is. And today we are 
standing in the middle of industry, fourth industrial revolution, and which is a connected uh, component or physical systems in, in industry, uh, which makes independent decision what's happening around. <coughs> so, the fourth in, the industry for the O is actually a subset of the fourth industrial revolution, which con concerns uh, the traditional or typical industry, but not only. So there are some areas, for example, smart city is also part of the industry for the O, like uh, intelligent traffic light, who controls uh, independently how the traffic going on in the city, or some intelligent parking system controls how many cars have been parked in parking lot and which direction you should go. So with that, you can reduce in the city a lot of traffic. I think if you know Istanbul, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, also you can contribute to the, to the environment by getting some CO2. And uh, when I talk about Industry 4.0, so it's, uh, it's about connected devices. So every component in the industry is no more isolated, single uh, component. It's actually it's part of the whole system connected with existing uh, communication tools and communicate with each other. And even they can do uh, intelligent decision based on the data they have collected so far in real time and make even prediction for the future. So what is the main challenge in those connected world? So everything uh, communicates with each other. So what is the core, core of this uh, communication is actually the data. So the, the, the main problem of the industry today is uh, how they want to make more money or make more, make more business out of the data. So one uh, biggest challenge is Gravity growth, and the other one is operational overhead. So how you can avoid operational overhead and you can uh, increase your revenue, you have to have a skilled person knows everything what they are selling or what they are introducing to the customer. And uh, the second problem that they, they have to do is make some intelligent decision based on the data. Uh, which is available. And the third point is you have to have that customer relation, so you have to tightly couple the market to your product. As other, on the other hand, operational overhead means how you can produce more product, product within, uh, within uh, the same time and increase the efficiency. So, so that means in industry, data is fundamentally changing uh, the way we have done the business. For example, any product uh, what you produce, uh, produce some kind of data, either di directly for, for itself, from itself, or during the sales process, or when it was used. For example, the people buy this product today, they will talk about it in social media. Oh, I bought a, a nice uh, Siemens uh, washing machine. It works very well. So this is kind. Of, this is also data. The, the people discuss this topic in the social media. So, as a producer of the product, you should be interested in those kind of data, and you should collect. It. So it might be coming from the social media. It might come from the, the sales channel, so coming from anywhere. And then you have to store the data and process it, and then even use some model with a machine learning and use the artificial intelligence to make some uh, decision based on the product and bring the next version or better version of the product is market or even bring more product. So what, what happens if you have a new product? it will be get attracted from more people. And more people means more data. So the loop at the end closes and it rotates all the time to get sick. So if I summarize the whole chain, so 
you have data from operational point of view or from the customer, so you have to know how to ingest data, how to store the data, how to analyze the data, and then at the end, how to consume the data and make a better decision based on the data. That means the operational technology challenge becomes at the end. <laughs> so there is a saying, uh, data is new oil, whoever owns the data owns the business. So data becoming more important. So this is an example from the industry. So you have uh, many devices uh, in the factory, for example, and those devices are somehow connected to a sensor and they produce all the time any kind of data. It might be the vibration, it might be temperature, it might be humidity, anything. So the device connects. And then it will be sent to a central component by using any available, any means of available communication channel. And then those data will be pre-processed at the edge. Or if you know what I am going to do with that device, for example, if something strange happens with the device, for example, what is too fast, if you don't shut down the device in the next half an hour, if the device gets bad, then you have to shut it down from this edge gateway, and you activate one of the activators, then you can shut down the device. Or you send it to, to, the, to the, some kind of computing environment to do the analysis. I will come back to this picture after I, I, I enter this cloud. So, one of the, uh, the, the, the concepts what industry uh, very much interested in is something called the Internet of Things. So, what means Internet of Things? It, it's a kind of device, any kind of device, use any kind of connectivity to communicate uh, with any service attached to it, and then collect any content, send to any storage, and then any compute to analyze the data. So it's, a, it's not purely technology, it's not purely business, but it's something in between, it's concept. So this is some example how many industrial devices today are running uh, worldwide. For example, uh, we talk about always connected cars. So connected cars is also kind of Internet of Things, or connected coffee machine. So coffee machine tells you whether there is enough water in it, or do you have to make some service on a coffee machine. So this is also kind of thing. Or even washing machine today connected to internet, so you sit in the office, and you already put your clothes, and then you can start in your office, and even you can monitor whether it's working or not. So those are the things called Internet of Things. So and uh, it has a lot of motivator why you want you have to have Internet of Things uh, because we, we as a human being uh, we are lazy and we would like to automate as many things as possible. And this is uh, some uh, uh, forecast for the future: how much money we are going to spend on Internet of Things, how much money we are going to spend in industry. Uh, to get more things working independently and connected to each other. So this is just an example from connected car, for example. It communicates always with the satellite and even sends data to, to uh, the, the cars and surroundings. Now, who are the, the technical enablers of uh, Industry 4.0? There are nine uh, components, including cloud, including Internet of Things, Big Data and Analytics, Augmented Reality, uh, Autonomous Robots. So those are the enablers of Industry 4.0 in technical means. And the very, very uh, fundamental component of this uh, Industry 4.0 is Cloud. Cloud is a, I will talk about it in a minute, and Cloud also provides a lot of services on the, on the platform about industry, uh, IoT, or big data analytics, uh, etc. That's why cloud computing is one of the main drivers uh, for from industry world. So now, I jump to the next section. So what is cloud computing? 
So cloud computing is nothing more than a shared pool of configurable computer sources. When I talk about computer sources, it could be network, it could be a computing service, a server, storage, application, uh, which you can uh, get it from a shared pool in convenient and on demand way, and you can get the, the resource within a minute, for example. Some services you can get the meet within a minute, maximum probably half an hour or two, to create a whole blueprint of industry applications. And for this, you need very minimal uh, effort to manage source and market. And uh, cloud computing is, is not about the need of new technology. So CPU is a CPU, memory is memory, disk is disk. So there is nothing changed to that one. Virtualization, yes, it exists, but it's the same concept as we used to know. And it's a complete new way of consuming compute resource by using uh, some intelligent management of the resources. And I won't talk much about some things. Yeah. yeah, there are different deployment modes, private, public, community, and hybrid clouds. This is interesting for people who is interested in uh, money and uh, security. So, for example, in some cases, in some countries, they don't allow to leave some important personal data from the from your border of your, your country. So in that case, you have to use kind of private cloud, otherwise public cloud is also good. So what is the benefit of cloud computing? Why everybody talks about cloud computing today? Because one reason, you can eliminate your data center, uh, you can eliminate your existing physical computing environment, you just uh, get it uh, from internet uh, by uh, by paying a monthly what what have what, what you have used. So there is an analogy between cloud computing and electric power. So today nobody goes to market and buy power generating machine and install it at home. This is ridiculous today. So what you do is you subscribe to energy provider and you, you pay monthly how much you have used. It's the same thing as cloud computing. You don't buy any compute. You just use for, uh, through your uh, communication line, and then you pay at the end of the month. The yeah. so rest is uh, more uh, very deep technology. For example, going global, because it's available in everywhere, if it's international company, or you don't have to spend money on your computer and you can go directly with your business case and uh, you start with your innovation. Who are the players in the market? So today uh, Amazon, uh, it's called Amazon Web Services actually, uh, this company owns 33% of the market share worldwide. And all other companies, all big names, all together, Microsoft, Google, IBM, Alibaba, Oracle, all together they cannot beat Amazon. And this number is changing every day. For example, the speed of innovation from Microsoft is, is higher than, for example, Amazon. And probably today, Microsoft is somewhere between 16 and 20 percent, and Amazon probably down to 30. So this number is changing. The market is very competitive because industry is interested in millions of business going in cloud. And there is a project called the GDI from the US government, and they would like to spend 10 million of, of dollars in cloud computing. That's why, if you are interested in, because this is a university, if you are interested in, com in computing information technology, you should look at that trend. Look at the comp cloud computing. Okay. So, I come back to this uh, last uh, example from uh, industry. So, now, instead of buying a computing environment, you could uh, feed the data directly in the cloud by, by existing communication channel, and then you can store the data for later for reporting or analytics purpose, you can save the data in chip storage, or you can uh, connect that to existing uh, analytics application like Hadoop, you can analyze your data and get some insights of your uh, industry, or you can create something else and you can connect all those components uh, to any available 
visualization tools, analytics tool, or reporting tools. And this is a wave of, wave of innovation in industry for the door. So it has started in 2014. They start to use cloud uh, computing to save the data and to process the data. 2016, this uh, uh, Internet of Things sending the data through uh, sensors and uh, <coughs> some communication channel to the cloud is uh, introduced 2006. Or actually, it was introduced well before, but it became mainstream. And then 2018, it's about edge technology. Now we are talking about artificial intelligence. And uh, after 2020, I assume it will be reinforcement learning, uh, kind of autonomous robots. They can drive on the street and they can collect the data, make some intelligent decision. Is it a, uh, in, is it a, some blockage or is it a road is, or is it a water? So they can do their own decision without human interaction. So it's going to be a uh, very false innovation. Okay. So this is an example uh, which I work currently uh, with a project. So it's a, a big international company. They have a lot of uh, seaports around the world, in Egypt, in Turkey, in Kenya, and probably everywhere. And the main problem what they have is they collect the grains from the field, let's say in September, and uh, put in the warehouses before they ship it to somewhere else. So the biggest challenge what they have is if you store the, the grains in the warehouses for a long time, it will get bad. So it will influence of your revenue. So you should inform yourself before it gets bad. So what they did is they asked a company to develop a sensor to monitor temperature, humidity, and CO2 in the warehouse. Because we are a communication company, and at the same time, it's cloud computing IT company, they asked us to implement the solution. So this is what I designed for the customer. So they have a sensor. And they, they use our Swisscom communication channel to feed the data in cloud. And uh, so what we, what we do on the cloud is we put some components in the cloud to collect the data. And depending on the usage of the data, we will put the data in different direction. For example, store in uh, chip storage for analytics purpose, or a pass, fast pass for visualization of the data and some integration of the existing applications. And if there is something happened, you should monitor and alert the customer. So those are the requirements what we implemented to the customer. Yes. So with that, I conclude my uh, talk or my presentation. If you have any question, you can ask me afterwards because <laughs> Mr. Sayın, arkadaşlar teşekkür ediyoruz.